almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of this earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under the most gracious rule of your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I was glad when they said unto me, We will go into the house of the Lord. The hour cometh, and now is, when true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Dearly beloved, we've come together in the presence of God our uh, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his holy word, 
and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and in mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the desires and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have left undone things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins. True repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips. And our mouth shall show forth our grace. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, and is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia.
A reading from the book of Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and I will seek them out. As the shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among the scattered sheep, so will I seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them to the countries, and I will bring them into their own land. I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the watercourse, and in the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them in good, with good pasture, and in the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture, and they shall lie down in good grazing land and they shall feed on the rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, I will bring back the strayed, I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted all at the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide, I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravaged. I will judge between the sheep and the sheep. I will set over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God and my servant David will be a prince among them. And I, the Lord, have spoken. The word of the Lord.
reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from, the, from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and we gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And what, when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The word of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
There is an old joke that you may have heard about a large group of children who were all lined up for lunch in the cafeteria of an elementary school run by an Episcopal church. At the head of the table, the lunch table, was a large pile of apples. Every day they ran out of apples. So the chaplain made a note and posted it on the apple tray. Take only one. God is watching. <laughs> At the other end of the table, as the children moved down the line, there was a large plate of chocolate chip cookies, the kids' dessert for that day. Next to the cookies was a note written in crayon by one of the students. It read, take all you want. God is watching the apples. <laughs> take all you want. God is watching the apples. We live in a value-neutral society where many people like to believe that there is no higher standard of judgment than our own conscience. We believe we can pretty much do what we want as long as it isn't illegal. And if it isn't illegal, then no one has the right to stand in judgment over our actions. Now, people of faith, people who believe in a God who cares about human behavior, may recognize a standard of judgment higher than the individual's conscience. But even the religious tend to fool themselves into thinking that God isn't interested in judging them, but only the other God. Religious folks tend to believe that God is watching the apples and not the cookies. That God is watching someone else, someone who needs watching, like Kim Jong-un or Vladimir Putin. However, as our gospel for today proclaims, God is watching us. God is watching not just the grand villains of the world. God is watching you and me every moment of every hour of every day. God cares about our behavior. God cares about what we do and do not do. We may be saved by our faith but we are judged by our actions. This view of Christ as judge stands in sharp contrast to the view of God as the good shepherd who cares for his sheep, the God who searches for the lost and comforts the suffering as we read in Ezekiel today. The truth is, the good shepherd and the judge are two sides of the same divine mystery. We cannot have the one God without also having the other. God, the good shepherd who cares for his sheep, is also Christ the King, the judge, the final arbiter of right and wrong, the God who separates the sheep from the goats. We cannot cling to the God who loves us so much that he died for us without also honoring the God who will one day be our judge. It is a total package. In our gospel for today, Jesus is only a couple of days away from his death. He is on his way to the cross. He knows that he will be killed, and he wants his followers to understand the implications for them of what it means 
to be his disciples. And so Jesus does something amazing in this passage. He teaches his friends something that ought to be branded onto our hearts and kept always in front of our eyes. He tells his disciples that he does not just care about those who are hungry or thirsty or in need of clothing or in prison or the stranger in our midst. It's not a matter just of caring about these people. Jesus tells his disciples it is deeper than that that is more fundamental. It is a matter of identification. Jesus is the hungry, the thirsty, the guilty prisoner, the naked, malnourished child. Jesus is every person who walks through the doors of this church wondering if there is anyone here who will greet them and make them feel welcome. Therefore, if we want to love Christ, and Christ is these people, then we must love these people. We must actively seek to love those Jesus calls the least of these. We can't love Christ and think we ought to love these people. We can't love Christ and intend to love these people. There is no separation. Jesus gives us no maneuvering room this morning. We will be judged by how well we love God. And we can only love God by loving those in our world who are most in need. The least of these who are members of God's family. The famous evangelist Billy Sunday once asked a rhetorical question, what must I do to be in hell? Nothing, Sunday answered. And that's the message of Matthew 25. If we want to have hell on earth, then all we have to do is do nothing, look the other way. The goats in Jesus' parable were those people who saw the need but did nothing to help. The goats' response is captured perfectly in this paraphrase of today's passage. I was hungry, and you said I should apply for food stamps. I was hungry. I was homeless, and you said there was a shelter downtown. I was lonely, and you said, get an iPod. I was beaten, and you said, avoid dark alleys. I was naked, and you said, the Salvation Army has clothes. I was sick, and you said, apply for Medicaid. I was illiterate, and you said, get a library card. I was poor, and you said, God loves the poor. I was imprisoned, and you said, try the parole board. I was depressed, and you gave me a smile button. I was dying, and you said, there is eternal life. If we really love Christ, if we really understand what it means to love Christ, would we forget, could we forget the millions of people who suffer and die because of poverty and hunger? If we really loved Christ, wouldn't we know like we know our own phone numbers or like we know the birth dates of our spouse or our children the statistics that point to some of the travesties of our world, like the fact that 14.7 million children, approximately 20% of the children in this country, live in poverty. Wouldn't we know and care that 
Our nation's fast, our nation's food banks fed 46 million people last year. Wouldn't we know that since 1990, the percentage of men in prison has increased 77%, and the percentage of women in prison has increased 108%. If we understood what it means to love Christ, wouldn't we know these things and actively do something about them? When my judgment day comes, when your judgment day comes, when we stand before Christ and have to answer for our lives, most of our achievements will not matter in the least. It won't matter that we made a fortune in the market. It won't matter that we were the managing partner of a law firm. It won't matter that we were the chief of staff at a hospital. It won't matter that we were the rector of a big church or the bishop of a good diocese. Jesus does not care about those things. Christ is only going to ask us one question, I think. He's going to ask, who did you love? Did you love stuff more than you loved people? Did you love only yourself? Did you love only when loving was easy? Did you love only your own flesh and blood? Christ is going to ask us, did you love me in all of those other people who had so little and needed so much? What are we going to say? Amen. Let us stand and affirm the faith we have so eloquently heard this morning. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From gent come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with spirit. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us our salvation. And do thy ministers with righteousness. And may God chosen people the Lord. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in me and in the city. Lord, keep this nation under thy care. And God has the way of justice and truth. 
Let thy way be known upon earth. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Create in us clean hearts, O God. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in thy well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, the King eternal, who dividest the day from the night and turnest the shadow of, of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep thy law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done thy will with cheerfulness while it was day, we may, when the night cometh, rejoice to give thee thanks. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who did stretch out thine arms of love on the hardwood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of thy saving embrace. So clothe us in thy spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know thee to the knowledge and love of thee, for the honor of thy name. Amen. Almighty and most merciful God, we remember before you all poor and neglected persons whom it would be easy for us to forget, the homeless and the destitute, the old and the sick, and all who, who have none to care for them. Help us to heal those who are broken in body or spirit and to turn their sorrow into joy. Grant this, Father, for the love of your Son, who for our sake became poor, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us hold before the gaze of God those in this community who have asked for our prayers. We commend to God's gracious care the sick, and those in need, Carol Barnes, Jeannie Bryden, Catherine Gabriel Carey, Lindsay Danby, Will Davis, Billy Farrell, Michael Gildenfeld, Clay George, Bill Hardy, Knox Hubbard Sr., Debbie Lickey, Louise Lowe, Grace Longo, Isla Lux, Lissy McMahon, Beverly Reynolds, David Wayne, and Betty Whitehurst. I invite you to, to hold before God those whom you love and those whom you know are, are in need of prayer. And we give thanks for the lives and ministry of all those in our parish who celebrate their birthday today. Mary Horton, Ann Honeycutt, Sidney Sanderson, Hank Coolen, and McNair Jennings. 
and in the sheer, sheer, sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life, we remember especially Betty Munford, who died recently, and Suzanne S. Neal and Alexander W. Neal, Jr., in whose memory the flowers at the altar are given. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all. We bless thee for our creation <coughs> and all the blessings of this life. Above all, in thy inestimable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee to give, give, us give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that we may, may be, that we show forth our praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Good morning, St. James's. Morning. Welcome to all of you today. A special welcome to any who might be visiting with us uh, this Sunday. We're glad that you're here and part of our parish family. And I hope you will take a moment to introduce yourself at the front door so that we can, can offer you welcome. Uh, lots of announcements for you today. I hope you'll read your, your um, Sunday chimes carefully. Many things going on. Um, first, I want, if you helped out with the taste of St. James's this year, if you helped to make some food or you worked at the taste on Wednesday night or helped to box and bag all the wonderful things that were sold, if you volunteered in any way, would you please stand up for a minute? Stand up, volunteers out there. I know you're out there. So many people give of their time uh, to the taste, and it was a huge success. A uh, special thanks to Laura McCoy and Aaron Jewett, who were the co-chairs this year's for the Taste, and they raised fourteen thousand dollars. And all of that money goes to make meals that we serve out of our kitchen to care for the poor and the homeless. So fourteen thousand dollars in pot pies and baked goods and wonderful goodies. Thank you all so much. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, don't forget that uh, this Thursday on Thanksgiving Day, we have a service at 10 a.m., uh, Thanksgiving Day service. We have brass and timpani, wonderful music. Uh, we give thanks for uh, the bounty of our lives, for the great country in which we live. And um, so I hope you'll come be with us. The service lasts an hour. We'll get you out of here before your turkey dries out, I promise. So come and be with us at 10 o'clock. Um, in the same vein, if you have not yet picked up a grocery, in a grocery bag in the narthex that has a list of food items needed by the food bank. 
I hope that you'll do that today. Pick one up and take it with you to the grocery store when you do your Thanksgiving shopping. Uh, get the items that the food bank needs and then bring the bag back here Thanksgiving Day when you come for the 10 o'clock service or any time during this week you can bring it to the parish office. And we will give God thanks for all that food and take it to the food bank. So I hope if you can that you will help us out with that. Also, the giving tree is underway. It's hard to believe, but the f next Sunday is the first Sunday of Advent. Advent is upon us. Today is the last Sunday of the church year, and we begin a new church year next Sunday. And so the giving tree is in the narthex. And for those who don't know about the giving tree, on that tree are ornaments of families who need gifts for Christmas, families who cannot afford or um, may not be able to provide gifts for their children. And if you would like to help provide Christmas for a family, take one of the ornaments off the tree and write your name down with one of the volunteers so we know you have that ornament. Um, purchase the gifts and bring them back by December 14th. So if you're interested in doing that and going shopping for a needy family, that is a great ministry. Walk in love as Christ loved us gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, so draw our hearts to thee, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so control our wills, that we may be wholly thine, utterly dedicated unto thee. And then use us, we pray thee, as thou wilt, and always to thy glory and the welfare of thy people through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may join me if you will. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto, unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.